So tell me about you guys this week. How was it? Callie? Callie got her braces off. That's exciting. Braided. Aiden got sick. I mean, I guess whatever. Anything else fun happened this week? <laughs> Ella gets to be here. That's amazing. Aiden got better. Cannon's here. You guys had a new baby donkey born that, that you didn't know that was supposed to be born? Was it your sister? Oh, no, I'm joking. I didn't say which one, but, you know, no, I'm joking. Braden's here, and you get your first paycheck tomorrow. That's going to feel amazing to get some cash. All right, so tonight, what I want to minister to you guys about is activation, okay? There are three steps to activate your faith, but before we get into that, I want to ask you guys something. Does anybody know what this is? It's an envelope? It's, it, it, it is? Oh, it says Harvest Bank, right? What do you guys think is in here? You think money's in here? Usually money. Do you guys believe money's in here? Because it's me, you think there's money in here? Okay. If you believe there's money in here, I need you to tell me how much money you think is in here. One thousand? Five dollars? One dollar? Fifty? Two hundred? Three? Five hundred? Ten grand? Do you think it's the written out check for the missionaries? I hope I took out enough money. Twenty bucks? Well, th guess what? If you guys all tell me that there's twenty dollars in here, the first person to get up, you've got to tell me first, and come get it, it'll be yours. Twenty dollars. <laughs> 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 <Not yet. laughs> so Ella, what's in there? Oh, there's twenty bucks in there, right? So what just happened? No, it's yours. So guess what happened? There's three things that happened. Ella believed that that envelope held something. And then guess what else happened? Then what Ella did is she said that there was money in there. And then what did Ella do? Then she came and got it. Right? Now guess what Ella gets? Ella gets $20. Ella's activated with $20. Thank God I took all the other money out. Right? But so what happened is, is that is an amazing example of our faith. You know why? Because there was one person in this entire room that moved. You know what is in my pocket? Money. Guess what happened? Guess what happened? We had one person. Out of all of you believe that there was money there. Only one. You didn't do what I told you to do. So guess who got the benefit of that? Only the one person that moved. If all of you would have moved, I had 20. 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 I had 100. I had a hundred, I had a hundred, I had a hundred, I had a hundred, I had another hundred, I had another hundred, I had another hundred. Oh, and there's another one, and 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 another one. But guess what? No one moved. Guess what? There's one person that got the benefit. Because they actually believed. There was one person that got the 20 because she believed. And she spoke and she acted. Okay, with our faith in Luke 9, 1 through 6, it says, One day Jesus called together his 12 disciples and gave them power and authority to cast out all demons and heal all diseases. 
Then he sent them out to tell everyone about the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Jesus then said in verse 3, Take nothing for your journey. He instructed them, Don't take a walking stick, a traveling bag, food, money, or even a change of clothes. Wherever you go, stay in the same house until you leave that town. And, as, and if a town refuses to welcome you, shake, shake the dust off of your feet and leave to show uh, that they have abandoned the, you have abandoned them and left them to their fate. Verse 6, this is amazing. So they began their circuit of villages, preaching the good news and healing the sick. Guess what the disciples did in verse 6? Number one, they believed. To activate our faith, number one, we have to believe. We have to believe that what is in the envelope, what is in the word of God is really there. Ella believed that there was really $20 in that envelope that I had in my pocket. That envelope that I pulled out that even said Harvest Bank. Like it's clear that it came from a bank. Right? She said there's $20 in that envelope. And then guess what she did? She came and got it. The same way as the disciples did. The disciples then, they believed God. Then they went out and they began to preach the good news of Jesus. They began to speak what Jesus told them to speak. And then guess what? They began to act on it by healing the sick. It wasn't by what the disciples were amazing at. It was a matter of what authority had been given to them. So there's three ways that you can activate your faith. There's three ways that you can begin to get exactly what God has for you. Number one, you have to believe. Right? You must believe. Faith is activated by believing. You cannot have faith if you don't believe in Jesus. You can't have faith if you don't believe what God says is true. But I can guarantee you one thing. Next time I come up here and I pull out a bank envelope, I bet all of you guys come running. I bet all of you guys come and say, you know what, Pastor Andy? There's money in there and I'm coming. Why? Because you saw it work. You just saw faith in action. It may have been for $20, but you just saw someone that believed and came and got it. So, if you don't, did you know what? It is impossible to have faith. I mean, Oh, oh my God, I just completely messed that whole thing up. But it is what it is. Um, did you know that there is nothing impossible with God? Do you believe that? That there is nothing impossible with God? I remember the day that I thought $2,000 was a big deal. I remember the day when I felt like certain number figures were such a huge like attainable goal. Like, this is what I think success looks like. But you know what? Success to me no longer is how much money I have. Success to me means, am I doing the perfect will of God? I don't care what I have. Just as these disciples did, Jesus told them to leave everything aside, go preach the gospel, and tell people about me and heal the sick. Guess what they did? They did it. They didn't go without. If you keep reading in Luke 9... The disciples were absolutely lit. They were on fire that it actually worked. Like they began to preach the gospel. They began to heal the sick. And guess what? They were like, listen, God, like it actually works. Like these people are actually like the demons are listening to us. And then Jesus really is like, guys, like hold up. It's in my authority, not yours. I gave it to you. Right? But do you believe that nothing is impossible with God? Do you really believe it? I've seen it. I mean, like, there are things that I know are, that were impossible that God made possible. I believe that. So guess what I'm going to do if I believe it? I'm going to begin to speak the impossible, and then I'm going to begin to act on it so that I can see it come to pass. Do you believe that God would supply all of your needs according to His riches and glory? Do you believe that? Some of you may. I know I've seen it in my life. I believe it. So if you believe it, begin to speak it. And then you're going to begin to act on it. I'm getting way ahead of myself. But do you believe that he told us to go into all the world, lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover? Do you really believe it? 
Because if you believed it, you'd begin to preach the gospel. You'd begin to say it, and then you'd begin to lay your hands on people. And then people would probably be labeling you Jesus freak, weirdo, oh my gosh. But guess what? They're going to know you're different. They're going to know something is different about you. You'll begin to show the life, nature, power, and ability of God. Do you believe it? I know I do. Do you believe that God is bigger than any situation? Any depression? Any anxiety? Any addiction? Do you believe that? Because I know I do. And if you believe it, then the second step to activate your faith is to speak it. You must begin to speak the word. You have to. If you don't speak it, you're giving God nothing to confirm. You're giving the Holy Spirit nothing to confirm in your life. Guess what happened in Genesis 1-1? Do you guys know? God created the heavens and the earth. How did God create the heavens and the earth? He spoke. But guess what was hovering over the face of the deep? The Holy Spirit. Isn't that amazing? Like God needed the Holy Spirit there too to confirm the word. So when God spoke and said, let there be light, the Holy Ghost was like, bam, there's light. And then he's like, hey, let there be some animals. And it's like, bam, there's some animals. Like, I don't know their name, but they're there. And he's like, let's make this dude named Adam. Bam! The Holy Ghost is like, Adam's here. Now, Adam, it's your job to name all these things that I created. Like, and then tell me what you named them. Could you imagine the memory of Adam? He had to have been real smart. And then, like, have even remember the animals. Like, I can barely remember my dog's name, much less all the animals, you know. But the crazy thing to me is that we, as humans, have been created in the image of God. If God created the world by speaking, God wants us to frame our worlds by our words. And then once we frame our world by our words, once we believe, and then we begin to speak, then number three, you guys already know it, we have to begin to act. Did you know faith without corresponding actions is dead? Faith without works is dead. If you show me what you do for God, I'll show you your faith. If you show me what you do, I'll show you what you have faith for. If, I show, if you show me your checkbook or your bank statement or whatever, I'll be able to tell if you have a heart after God or not. I can look at your bank account and tell, me, tell you where your heart's at. Where do you spend most of your money? Most of the time, that's where your heart's at. Right? So when we act, the Holy Spirit has something to confirm. Not only is it the words out of our mouth, it's our actions. When we go to lay hands on the sick, guess what's going to happen? They're going to recover. Okay? Sometimes it's instant. Sometimes it's a process. And not all the times is it right now. But guess what? We have to do something. We as believers are called to be the light of the world. We as believers are called to be the salt of the earth. If we in this room, if I don't begin to act like God has called me to do something, I am going to be passive and I may probably not do all that God has called me to do. And then guess who's held responsible for that at the end of the day? I am. When I stand before God, Am I going to be able to hear the words, well done, thou good and faithful servant? Or am I going to hear the words, you know, you did it halfway? Right? Like, do you guys want to hear that? Like, do you want to hear God say, well done? Or do you want to hear God say, well, you just barely made it? I want to hear well done, right? So I want to make sure that I activate my faith. Because we please God when we activate our faith. It is impossible to please Him without faith. Right? So how do we activate our faith? Number one, what do we do? All right. Number one, what do we do? We believe, right? Number two, what do we do? We say. Number three, what do we do? We act. So we believe, we speak, and then we act. And guess what? Then it's on God. Right? Kind of like that song. It's on God. But, you know, at the end of the day, if we don't do our part, God can't do his. So the world is only going to get darker. People of the world are only going to go crazier. Things are only going to get more messed up and messed up and messed up. 
But guess what we get to do? We get to be the light of the world. We get to shine brighter than ever before. And if we don't have faith, if we don't act like the real church, if we don't act like the disciples, and we don't go out and have faith and actually believe God and do what he said that we can do, say what he he says we can say, and act the way that he asks us to act, we're not going to be the real church and they're not going to know us. They're not going to know Jesus. Listen, if you tell people about him and they reject him, guess what? Do exactly like he told the disciples. Dust it off your feet. Let them deal with their own thing. At least you did your job. And at the end of the day, if you did your job, that's all you can do. You know, I have a goal now to talk to 10 people every week about God. Invite them to church. Can I pray for them? Talk to them about God. When we go out to eat, how can I give them a really good tip? Talk to them and pray for them. Invite them to church. Guess what happened Sunday? We had someone come to church because we gave them a really big tip and invited them to come to church. And you know what he said? He said, you know what? I was just talking to my mom yesterday about wanting to get back into church and build my relationship with God. And if I would have never spoke and never said anything and just gave him a really good tip, guess what would have happened? He may not be coming to church. He may not be getting his life right. I was the one that God wanted to speak into his life at that time. You guys are going to have opportunities to speak into people's lives. I want to encourage you. You need to get better in life. Not get bitter. Okay? I heard this sermon this, this week. And if you guys want to get better instead of bitter, you know what you've got to do? You've got to take the I out and replace it with E. There are so many times that we don't talk to people because we have the I. Like, I don't know enough. I can't do it. I'm not enough. Like, why would they listen to me? Like, it's an all about me, 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 me. Rather than thinking about them and their life and who we can really have an impact on. So get better in what you're doing. Get better in reading the word. You know, I was playing Xbox with Tyler. Was that last night or night before last when Addie came in? And um, she was talking about her streak on her Bible app was only 14. Like, she's read her Bible 14 days in a row. But... I know she's read it more than that because there was a few days that she was at my mom's and whatever and her iPad was dead and on and on. But like Libby, my youngest, she's on like, I think she said 79. She's read her Bible 79 days in a row. And guess what? She's seven. You guys can do it too. She doesn't understand it all, but she's reading it. You know, get better about being a Christian. Begin to believe God. If you, how many of you guys know what Matthew 28, 18 says? Exactly. Go and make disciples. All right, so let's bring it back a little bit more. What does John three sixteen say? Perfect. All right, what's Philippians 4, 19 say? Oh, 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 Philippians 4.19, what's it say? Oh, 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 oh. What's Philippians 4.19 say? All right, listen, listen, this right here is exactly what I'm talking about. How can you believe if you don't know what the word says? Okay, my God shall supply all of my need. My need, according to his riches and glory. And again, that comes back to his riches, not ours. Bro, like he literally walks on streets of gold. Like he was the original inventor of Dogecoin. Like, right? Like it was, he had it before it was point zero zero one. You know, like it's going to go to a dollar and then probably two dollars and three dollars or whatever. Like, I mean, like Bitcoin and the price of all that stuff doesn't even compare to God's riches. So we have to know and believe what God says so that we can begin to act on it. We have to believe it 
speak it, and then act on it. Those are the three ways that we begin to activate our faith. Okay? So you've, how do you activate your faith? Number one? Okay. Number one? Number two? Number three? You act, right? Believe, speak, and act. It is so simple, and God made it so simple. Huh? BSA. Just BSA it. Believe it, act it, speak it. Or believe it, speak it, act it. Don't do it backwards. I know. I don't want to be that youth pastor on YouTube saying something backwards and then it goes viral because I want to keep my job. Um, anyway, so guys, I want to encourage you guys this week, dive into the word and begin to believe it. Okay, that's the very first step. You've got to know what it says so that you can begin to believe it. Let's pray. Father, I glorify and magnify you. I thank you for tonight. I thank you for the opportunity to speak to the students. Father, I pray that you will begin to pierce their heart. You'll begin to leave something, leave them with something, Father God, so that they will begin to activate their faith. They'll begin to speak your word. They'll begin to believe your word. And, Father, they will begin to act on your word. Father, I thank you that we know that faith without works is dead. Father, I thank you that you have so many scriptures about faith. And, Father, I thank you that you'll continue to lead us and guide us into all truth. Father, I thank you for empowering these students. Make them bold as lions as they go out to their school. Make them bold as lions as they go out and talk to their friends. Father, I thank you that you'll continue to show yourself to us. You'll continue to use us to reach the world around us, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, amen. amen. All right, um, on another note, who else coming to camp? Perfect. How many of you guys have your applications for camp? At home. At home? I need you guys to fill it out and get it in. Fill it out and get it in. Okay? All right? How many of you guys can sing that with me? Fill it out and get it in. Perfect. Because if you guys don't fill it out and get it in, we can't reserve the number of spots that we need. So uh, the next thing is, Andy B. Out of School Bash next week. Invite your friends, right? Like you guys are saying we want game nights and we're, you know, events and that stuff. Invite your friends. Hey, do you know who that is, Elena? Yeah, like, right? You remember that? Yeah. So, like, invite your friends, okay? Let's have a ton of people here next week at the Out of School Bash, okay? Let's make Pastor Jesse and I, like, absolutely scramble because we don't have enough food. Like, oh gosh, oh gosh, we got to do something different, okay? Huh? That's fine. Uh, and then, go night, Andy B's, May 16th. If you guys are interested, please let us know. Nobody signed up. If there is a sign up out there, so please sign up if you're going to go. Um, it is going to be 25 bucks. Do they need to pay before or there? We need to know how many is coming so that we can reserve a spot. A hot dog eating contest? What if I just got a hot dog suit and let you wear it? <laughs> All right. Callie? Okay. Perfect. All right, guys. Um, split up into small groups, I think. I don't know where service is at. Babe, babe, yes or no small group? Okay, no small group. Let's just go eat and have fun. If there's anything to eat. <laughs> 